which makes the third reconnaissance machine shot down this week. We're supposed to be harassing these Eindeckers and preventing that. We're not doing very well, are we? No, well... No, I know all the problems. Let's see what we can do about it. Our airfield, St. Marie. The Hun airfield, Tom Plav. Now, B2's from various squadrons in our sector head east across the lines. Now, the moment they cross the lines, someone tells Tom Plurve they're coming. Now, come in. Yes, get a move on. Now, they perform whatever idiocy they've been told to do and they turn around to come back. Now, all the time they're over the hunt lines, the enemy knows... Get out, Mills! Sorry, sir. All the time, what are you laughing at? Mills is idiocy. Where was I? Um, the all the idiocy. time they're over here, the hunt knows roughly where they are. Now, with the aid of... Rough calculations on the back of an envelope they can work out when these aeroplanes will be ready for the two Hun monoplanes at Tom Plurve. Now, we haven't got enough fuel to escort them all the way and fight. So all the Hun pilot has to do is finish his coffee, take off, shoot down the aeroplane and come back in time for a second cup of coffee before it gets cold. Now, what are we going to do about this? Hmm? Well, sir, the Huns don't attack if we manage to link up with our reconnaissance machine. The yes. trouble is, once they're over the enemy side of the lines, we just don't know where the hell they are. While the enemy does. Exactly. The enemy knows where they are, where well, we only know where they're supposed to be. Well, what's the answer then? I haven't got an answer, otherwise I wouldn't be asking you. Right, what am I going to have? Yes, I think I will have a whiskey, thank you. Ah, Millie. Yes, of course, Vincent. Go and get him, will you? I want the fire unlocked. Yes. Come on! Oh, dear, what are we up to now? I've been... Oh, my God. At the uh, relevant area, do you see? Now, assuming a cloud base at 8,000 feet, no point in going above that, can't see through cloud, Whiskey, one should be able to see an area approximately... So? So, working on a series of interrelated courses, we ought to be able to keep observation on the entire airspace accessible to the Huns at Templer. Well, that means you've done it. Hmm. Well, there are snags. What? Well, I estimate we need approximately 97 aeroplanes, and we've only got four. Put that back up. God, you're an idiot. No, not you, Alan. Come in. Get, get my brandy flask, Mills. Well, nothing. Towards the end of the search, I went up to Tom to see if I couldn't shoot them up on the ground before I ran out of petrol. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that, of course. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Yes? Yes? No machines on the ground. No, there wouldn't be, would there? Where was this? Just north of our lines, 50 miles north of our lines. This makes the fourth reconnaissance machine this week. God, they have two Eindeckers at Tom Plurve, and every damn reconnaissance machine we send up is a sitting duck. Me, this Charles is now, back. He managed to contact the B2 he was to escort before the Hun got to it. It's good navigation. Sure luck. Always is. Took one look, went home. God, it's almost foolproof, isn't it? We send up a slow, almost defenceless aeroplane. They shoot it down if just once. We had a 50-50 chance. Just once we had an aeroplane as good as theirs. Mm. Show me that map. Well, I should just fill her up with gin. Come on, take a long deep breath. Sorry to bother you, gentlemen. Deep breath. Deep breath. Get his upstairs having a sleep. Why? Come on, but it's been posted, sir. To England. Oh my God, lucky blighter. Well, I'll see you later. It's about time. <laughs> well, congratulations, sir. What? Cured your hiccups, anyway. Well, I've been what? placed to make the home. Hell, well. Oh, the Septon Isle. No, this is one of your April Fool thing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I wish they got it where. He's acting flat commander oh. as from tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to cancel the posting. What? Well, good Lord, surely you want to go. Well, naturally I want to go home, but imagine leaving the flight under your command. <laughs> By the time I get back, and I shall be back, I want those hundred dollar planes shot down. Do our best. Be a partner. What the devil do they think they're doing sending me home? Go. Enjoy yourself, sir.
We'll give you those two on monoplanes and welcome back, Sir. So. Drinkers, Sir. sit down. Thank you. Introduce her. We met Major Lansing, met him too. Sir. Captain. Just leaves Colonel Forbes. Sir. Colonel Forbes is with the Royal Aircraft Factory. And what you and I would normally call a colonel, civilian. They give them military ranks, do you see? Oh. God knows why. I expect you're wondering why you're here. Yes, I am, sir. Mm. Yes. Tell him. Your record has not gone unnoticed, Captain Triggers. Mm. And nor have your rather outspoken views on the BE-2. Good. The Royal Aircraft Factory insists it is an excellent aeroplane. They don't have to fly it. Quite so. Carry on. Be that as it may, it isn't the only aeroplane the Corps will have during the war. There are a great many designs now being made. In particular, there's one which is intended to become the sort of aeroplane you keep insisting oh. we need. Well, good. What, what, what is its role to be? A scout. Fighter. I should emphasize that this is a private venture. It doesn't have the backing of the Royal Aircraft Factory. You are to be posted to the factory that's making this aeroplane, to advise, <laughs> and of course to test. Well, may, may, I, may I request that somebody else has this posting? Why? I have my own flight in France with a special role, thank you. I'd like to see it through. You think nobody else can carry out what you're doing No, in I France? didn't say that. I simply mean there are plenty of pilots who can test Picture aeroplanes. Picture myself. There is also the matter of who is making this aeroplane. Your father. <laughs> we'll go home by the top road. Show you what you're going to inherit. There it is. 112 acres. 61 more acres than when you last saw it, son. Yes. The old factory. How'd they make it out now with all that's gone on around? Output doubled in three years. You see over there? That's my new flying field. Still not finished, of course. Welcome home, son. Welcome home. They attack us from behind with their forward firing machine guns. Firing forward? What do you do then? Stay out of their way. What else can we do? <laughs> I wish I was your age again. What do people in France wish they weren't? They wouldn't even have me for the South African business. <clears throat> I, I tried, you know. I remember. I would rather fence myself, riding on a horse, looking through binoculars at the enemy. And not that I like riding horses. No, I remember. I never did get on with horses. Dangerous animals. Too high off the ground. 
old teeth and sweat. <laughs> no, stick to what you do best. Mind you, that's difficult enough nowadays. What with women workers, don't know the difference between a lathe and a sewing machine. Government busybodies going on about excess profits. Men you wouldn't normally allow through the factory gates, calling themselves trade union organisers. <laughs> okay. You know, this has been one of the best days of my life. Ever since we had our differences, I I've been waiting for this. Father, I want you to understand something. Mm. I told you before I'm not going to take over the factory. I'm still not going to. No, oh, just give yourself a few months, you'll soon change your mind. I won't be here for a few months. I'm going back to France as soon as I can. We'll see, son. We'll see. Father, when Mother left... Don't talk about her. I, I want to talk about her. Please, her. I'm asking Please, you. Please, just no. once, then I promise. I won't you mention get her again. You understand, a man does not change how he when feels. When Mother left, I realised a lot of things. I realised she'd been wanting to leave for a long time. Now, she couldn't. I had school to finish and so forth. You're right, you're right. Yes, I wrote her. She wrote back? Yes, of course. I've written to her. God knows how many times. I realised I, I She's never this. written back to me. After anything she wanted, she just had to say it. I realised... I needed the same thing she did. She wasn't getting them either. It'll change. Oh, it'll change. It's in the family. We've always been bloody-minded. Us triggers. Now, come on. Yeah. You are find you here. Uh, don't, don't get up. Owen, meet Tony Snow, my chief designer. How do you do, mate? My son Owen, Captain Triggers, RFC. This is a young man. They all said was too clever by half when he was working at the Royal Aircraft Factory. They didn't tell me that. I was talking to General Henderson, War Office. Mm, yes. Started to tell him what was wrong with British aeroplanes. Everything you put in your letters. Oh, really? Mm. Mm. Told me I didn't know what I was talking about because I didn't make aeroplanes. So I told him I didn't know a damn thing about turbines until I started making them. Nor wire ropes, nor liming tanks. But now one of the biggest firms in the Empire. In all of them. That's when I decided we'll make aeroplanes. The very best. Just a minute. What the devil do you think you're going? Well, I don't pay you to drink me. tea. If you want to drink tea, drink in your own time. Get back to your bed. You can see it's very simple. So I asked who was the best design in Britain and hired young Tony. The real thing was the factory wanted to get rid of me. Well, I shouldn't be surprised, but I do know I just got in ahead of Sockwitz and Robert Blackburn. <laughs> what I've always said. Find the right man, pay him the right money, trust him. Sack him if he lets you down. What, what do you, you think of it? What are you working on here? Well, you can see well, you it. like it? You... Yes, I think it seems to be the right idea. How far have you got with it? Well, we'll show you. Come on. Mm -hmm. You'll notice quite a few differences from the B2. Good. Uh, for one thing, we've managed to keep the weight down about 780, 790 pounds, that's all. So we're using the Lorone engine. Oh. Mm. Oh. This is the first prototype. We, we've another one, we've finished. Oh, beautiful. Ryan? Well, we won't be sure until you've tested her. But I've calculated 10,000 feet in 14 minutes. B2 takes half an hour. Yes, I. Not about your letters, home. Everybody did. <laughs> Good. The main thing is the main thing is this. Well, we're using Harry Calvert's interrupter. Does it work? Well, we still have a few teething problems. Few teething problems. I've got enough trouble when I've got a hand on my tail without worrying about shooting my propeller off. You tell me how it works. How it's supposed to work. We'll sort it out. All right. Good. We'll need a new engine. You can sort it out. Come on. Uh. What about the beard model? Oh, no, no, no. It's far too heavy for the small amount of extra power. Mm -hmm. Well, the Clerget, to 110. Yes, you see, but we can't rely on guessing them. The French have first claim. Well, I've heard about this fun, though. What about that? Oh, yes. Well, that's the best engine in the world for its weight. Did you see the British are licensed to make them? No, French. No, well, the company's headquarters are in Barcelona. So all negotiations oh. will have to take place manana. Manana, it's typical, isn't it? The middle of a war and everything takes place manana. Okay. Yes. Do you know what's held back British aero design more than anything else? General staff, I guess. <laughs> no, magnetos. Mm. At the outbreak of war, there was only one British firm making magnetos. Mm. They were obsolete. The only way designed for things like lorries. So we tried American magnetos. Well, they were hopeless in aircraft. The only people in the world who made the type we wanted was Bosch, German. Uh, well, presumably we copied them, didn't we? Oh, and infringed their patents? Certainly not. We had to buy them through neutral countries when the Germans weren't looking. Perfect tidiness, Mr. Snow. 
Yes, sir. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some work to do. Yes, fine. I'll come and look at your designs, all right? Oh, thank you. No, I won't have plenty of time. As soon as I've done anything I can, it's useful when I'm going back. What, what do you mean? I put in my application, that's what I mean. Mind you, the way these things drag on could take months, really. But surely somebody's told you. Tell me what. Well, there's no question of you going back to France. It's all been arranged. You're going to take over the aeroplane division. Indeed. Your father. Oh, yes. I assumed you knew. If you and I are going to get on together, there are a few things you're going to have to understand about my father. Yes. Now, my father is a remarkable man. Well, of course he, he is. Will you listen, please? He inherited a fair-sized, reasonably successful, stuck-in-the-mud business, and he turned it into one of the most enterprising go-ahead group of companies in the world. If you seek his monument, uh, look around. What? Well, that's the epitaph on Wren's tomb in St. Paul's, but... Well, it applies to your father, too. Rubbish. He has no integrity at all. Well, why? Many reasons. Some are personal, some oh, are not so personal. I'm sorry, I didn't... Oh, for I... God's sake, don't be so sensitive. You're obviously a first-class designer. Just relax. Before the war, I'd finished school. My father took me on a business trip to Germany. He introduced me to some members of the High Command, the German High Command. It was after dinner, they'd been talking. Well, perhaps they'd had too much to drink, I don't know, anyway. They made it crystal clear to me that the moment they thought the time was right, they would start a European war. So I came back to England and joined the Royal Engineers. Too far, and my huh? father made a very successful business arrangement with the Germans. Selling them a new form of recall mechanism he patented for German field guns. So, I shall do what I can now. As I won't be staying here any longer than I have to. Yes, I understand. Well, as you can see from the name. I want an initial order of 500. Oh, that's an awful lot for an initial order. Nonsense. We'll have made 5,000 before this war's over. <laughs> I'll tell you something else we'll make. What, sir? Our fortunes. Viper. Sorry? That's what we call it. The Viper. That's not bad. Particularly when we've got the Hispano engine. What's that got to do with it? But your son wants to mount two machine guns, firing forward, like a snake's tongue. But of course, we can't put that extra weight in until we've got the Hispano. We're not waiting on an engine we might not get for months. The moment we get an order, we go into production. The assembly line's about all laid out. We're not hanging around, letting all that plant lay there idle. Well, she's very sensitive. I told you she would be. Be very careful. But I think she's promising. <laughs> Didn't get out of her. Now, put the blip switch a little near the pilot's left hand, all right? Oh, yes, now, something else we must do. When she uh -huh. tips over, what happens? Now, you've got a magneto sparking, mm -hmm. you've got a red hot engine block, you've got the petrol tank. So, what happens? Mm? That pushes into that, into that. What have you got? A roasted pilot. Well, we can't change the position of the tank. Well, steel struts? Mm, steel's heavy. So, are pilots, but they don't just buckle, they burn. Uh, what about putting a sheet of asbestos between the, the engine and the petrol tank? Well, mm? nobody's ever done that. Why? I can't imagine. Presumably because they never thought of it. Mm. Look, suppose we allow for four tubular steel struts as mm. well as the asbestos. Mm. Well, that's going to affect the performance. Well, the Hispano engine will more than make up, won't it? Well, presumably we're going to get the right engine the before we go into production. Captain, the time factor well, again, the inefficiency. Here. We're going to strengthen the engine mounting mm. on the second prototype. Well, do what you like, lad. Just as long as it's ready by the time the production line's complete. Yes. I thought to my fly this morning. Not yet. When? When she's ready. When I come to tell you, we've got a visitor. Oh, who? Oh. Colonel Forbes. Oh, yes, Mr. That's right. And not the Forbes who's attached to the Royal Aircraft. Attached to me now. <coughs> Colonel Forbes, you've met my son, of course. Oh, you nice to meet you again. And you know my chief designer, oh, too. Do. So. Well, now, when do you propose to go into production? The moment we get an order. Of course, the rate will increase once the old line comes into operation. I'll push it through as soon as I can. Isn't there something we should be sure of first? What's that? That it's the right aeroplane? Excuse me, gentlemen, I'm very busy. Come on, Tony. Come on! Excuse me. Leave this to me. Captain, 
I'm sorry, I'm not quite... Perhaps you don't know the system clearly. Yes, of course the aeroplane gets tested. And it's flown out of France for testing other operational conditions. But that's no reason for delaying production until every little modification has been done. And subject to these little modifications, the aeroplane just gets made. Of course, if we are... And the pilots in France who have to fly them, when do they get consulted? Look, son, we never get anything made before the peace if everybody put their spoke in. But I'm still not sure I know what you mean, the right aeroplane. Do you think there's something wrong with it? Look, I don't know. On paper or when she's taxing, she seems fine. But a lot of things are going to change when she gets the right armament when she gets the right engine, mm. the center of gravity for its We may not be able change. to wait for that engine. You'll have to. Excuse Look, me. Look, young Snow knows what he's doing. This is not the first aeroplane. Nobody knows time. anything about this until you get reports from the squadron. Nobody knows anything about this aeroplane until it's been test flied. Isn't that obvious? Then it's up to you to make sure that this aeroplane is what the squadrons want. Yes, yes I'm sir. telling you this is the finest fighting machine on Earth. It's up to all of us to make sure it's the right aeroplane and then go into full production. <laughs> At least that's the way the Royal Aircraft Factory works. <laughs> And the B-2 was the right aeroplane? Naturally, otherwise we wouldn't be making it. I fly B-2s. Yes, well, we all heard what you think of them. It's not just my opinion, it's the opinion of lots of pilots. All I can say is the rest of them aren't complaining. No, they're dead. And remember, you don't have to demonstrate everything in one flight. Yeah, but you don't have to demonstrate everything in one flight. anything of that. I told you. I told you she was marvelous. Mm. Well, what do you think of it? I suppose it's one way to wipe out the Royal Flying Corps. I still don't understand. It's really very simple. I simply don't want to talk about it in front of Forbes. Mm. I still don't want to talk about it. Oh, but Forbes is on our side Because now. you're paying him. Of course I'm not paying him. And will you stop playing with that damn dog at the table? I've just offered Forbes a job here after the war, that's I all. I know there are minor technical problems. But there's bound to be with a brand new design. A little more, sir. No, no, I'm not angry. It's right. Basically, I know it's right. It's wrong. Basically, okay. I know it's wrong. Yes, I'd love some more locusts. Thank you. All right. We'll go right through it. Everything. 
You tell me everything that you found and we'll work at it until you're satisfied. Well, it's only a question of a few modifications. In the morning. We'll talk about it in the morning, shall we? Lucas, tell Cook she's as good as she ever was. That was really delicious. Thank you, sir. Good time. Good time. And as you're about to take off, when you lift the tail, she had to swing to the right. You could end up at right angles the way you were going. Yeah, well, that's because she's so light, the rotary engine. Yes, I know it's the rotary engine. I'm just giving you a post-flight report. Now, another thing, when she's coming to land or when she's taking off, she tends to wander all over the countryside. Tail oscillation, I thought that might Tail oscillation, when your forebodings of no value to an inexperienced pilot. I can cure it. Good, I hope so. Now, in the air, she's absolutely beautiful. Oh, no. And interestingly, though, to turn left, she needs full left rudder. To turn right, she needs a little oh, bit of left rudder. That's the rotary engine again. Good, I thought it might be, but uh, a pilot who was used to flying, say, a B2 would get it wrong. He'd spin, stall and kill himself. So apart from that... Yes, apart from that, and assuming she gets the right engine. Yes, yeah, so there are no other me. problems at the moment. Yes, there is one other little problem. And what's that? Oh, fall off. No, that's nonsense. There was distinct wing flutter as I came out of that loop. The whole assembly was about to fall apart. And what's wrong with that? Get me a pen knife, I'll show you. I don't have a pen Excuse me, have one of you got a pen knife? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. See? See those cross wires? They're slack. If you get any slacker than that, the whole thing starts shaking. The wings fall off. But I, I don't know. But I checked it. My calculations. There are mathematical formulae for I that I don't sort understand of mathematics. Come on, I'll show you something else. See this? Segment of a wing. I was going to the loop. No cross wires. Start shaking. Sooner or later, the whole thing falls apart. What's that prove? What's that prove? I did just one loop and this thing falls apart. It proves under your damn stupid system, hundreds of men would have been flying this machine. Hundreds of men would have been killed. Hundreds of men would have been presumed to have been hit by Harchie Fire because none of them realised that it wasn't the enemy. It was you. Excuse me. The Vibe will be a production aircraft. I booked a tape with the Grand tonight to celebrate it. I'm afraid I can't be there. Oh, but it's in your honour. I'm taking my mother out. Oh, well, some other time then. Your son was right. Eh? Hey? She needed a lot more work on her. No. Besides the whole tail assembly, I've made all sorts <clears> of <throat> other modifications. The horn balance on the rudder, wider undercarriage. Not to mention the wing section. I've put a piece of three-ply between the front and rear spars. In other words, I've put a lid on the box. And it works? Perfectly. I've had a mock-up under test. She's had the equivalent of 62 hours in inverted flight. I can't make a break at all. Good. Up here. the Ministry of Munitions have agreed a costing. Which just leaves the question, what sort of production rate do you think you can manage? <coughs> well, that depends on how much factory space we turn over to aeroplanes. And that depends on the initial order we get. I would suggest something like 20 at first, sir. Send them out to France, give a few to different squadrons, get their reactions. Sounds reasonable. I would suggest more. In the meantime, I would urge their continued manufacture. I have no doubt there'll be a success. Any alterations, they can be made as we go along. Basically, then you're satisfied. In as much as one can be before they've been used operationally, yes. Mr. Snow? <clears throat> well, with the second prototype, I'm confident of a maximum speed of between 110 and 115. 40% faster than those damn nine decades. Ceiling ought to be 17, 18,000 feet. She'll climb twice as fast as any hand now flying, and she'll turn two or three times before the enemy's turned once. <laughs> Captain Triggers, she's the first British fighting machine I've ever flown which gives evidence that anybody's thought about it. Yes. Good. But to go into production now would be criminal. What? Well, with respect, you must get it right before a production model is made, let alone before any issue to squadrons. I don't see how we can know what modifications the squadrons will want until they've got well, Perhaps I could explain, yes, sir. Yes, all right, go ahead. 
We have to build an aeroplane that's basically what we need from the start. Now, already the Huns have a forward firing synchronized machine gun. And now we have one. Yes, but I don't know this, but I'll take a bet. But they're probably designing one with, a, with two forward firing machine guns. Actually, sir, we have had intelligence reports. Well, exactly. So it's useless to design an aeroplane which is outgunned by anything it has to fight. Mm. See what you mean? Oh, there's no problem. We'll fit two guns. Fine. Second. Point. If I can intervene, sir. Yes. Well, we can't do that because of the extra weight. There isn't an engine available that has a good enough power-to-weight ratio. But you, the, if, the engine will be available. If you're referring to the Hispano, we barely started negotiating. Well, then I suggest you get a move on. Don't waste time building an aeroplane, which is, which is a waste of time before you even start. But what we're talking about is giving our men the best aeroplane now available to fight with. What I'm talking about is giving my men the best chance of staying alive. I... I read your report on the first test flight. You made a number of criticisms. Yes, there were criticisms. But I'm sure we'd all like to know what changes have been made in the light of those criticisms. All the alterations that can be made have been made. Same engine, though. Yes. yes. Mm. You wrote very highly of her sensitivity. Well, basically, she is. She's a beautiful aeroplane. I'm very glad to hear you Even say so. Even as she is now, for some pilots, she's the answer to all the aeroplane we've been dreaming of. I can give you their names on one hand, though. Lano Hawker, McCutton. Benny Hux, Andrew Lang, Robert Smith Barry. Exactly. Pilots who know what they're For talking about. For everybody else, she's a death trap. Oh, oh really, no, really, so sir. I have to no, 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 explain what you mean. Don't you see, I was flying a brand new aeroplane. Every part was new. The engine, it was tuned by as fine mechanics as money could buy, correct? I sincerely hope so. I pay them enough. Yes, you pay them enough. But in action, the engine will be rough. There's no time to tune it between operations. The, the wires might be the right tension, probably not. The... The mechanics, the mechanics, the most they've ever done is tinker with a Model T Ford. The rest of them learn with us as they go along. The structure of the aeroplane is disintegrating. The fabric, the fabric's patched like a pair of Navy's trousers. That's true of all aeroplanes yes, in action. Yes, but this aeroplane is particularly sensitive. Haven't but you read my report? pilots can be trained to handle No, they the can't. Hire. There is no time. There isn't even time to teach them about air warfare. Look, let alone about teaching them about a completely different aeroplane to anything they've ever flown before. I'm still not sure I quite follow your argument about death traps. Look, the average pilot's flown, what, a Longhorn or a box kite? Now, any fool can crash one of these aeroplanes, but he has to be a damn fool or do something basically stupid to kill himself doing it. Of course. Now, after the minimum, the bare minimum number of flying hours he's sent over to France, he flies a B-2, which is, in fact, an exceptionally stable aeroplane. I see Captain now, Triggers is defending the B-2. I never as an advanced trainer in peacetime, it's excellent. It's only in wartime that it's totally useless. Where was I? Yeah, stick to the pilot. He's been flying, what, two, two and a half hours? He's been terribly frightened. He's freezing cold. He's suffering from oxygen starvation. He might be wounded. His aeroplane's probably damaged. If it's not, it's worse than it was when he took off. Now, all he's got to do now is put her down. In a B-2, he can dump her down. He might wreck the undercarriage. A wing might fold. But he'd have to be exceptionally unlucky, or he'd have to catch fire for him not to walk away. The B-2 has a very large margin for error. So? Now, so this, this new fighter has no margin for error. I happen to be a very experienced pilot. I nearly crushed her. Flying under ideal conditions with a brand new aeroplane. Now, the average pilot in France won't stand a chance. It'd turn over, it would crash, it would kill him. What do you suggest? Wait. Please wait. Wait until it's got the right armament. Wait until it's got the right engine. Wait until it's safe enough for the average pilot. Now we need aeroplanes, not next oh, year. Oh, no, no. The production line is virtually ready. I think my men's lives are more important than your profits. I'm not in business for profit only. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Triggers. No what you said. Anything else? Yes, there is something else. What's happened to my application to go back to France? Good night. Look, while your son's not here... I suppose it's only natural in wanting to see his mother. I wouldn't want you to think I was talking behind his back, but we have to keep a sense of proportion. Yes. He's uh, a perfectionist. Well, nothing wrong with being a perfectionist in peacetime, but we happen to be at war. I don't follow you. He criticizes the BE too. Well, in many ways, I agree with him. It's not a perfect aeroplane. No. On the other hand, if we hadn't had the courage to make the BE 2 we'd have 
Many airmen now, with no aeroplanes at all, the enemy would have a monopoly of the sky. Now, your new second prototype, does she incorporate all the alterations you learned from what you made from the first? Yes. I'll be open with you. My job is to equip the Flying Corps with the finest aircraft available. Not the finest aircraft possible in an ideal world. Available. The Flying Corps need them now. Yes. But a prototype isn't any use to us. We need hundreds of production aircraft in France, not prototypes in England that never get anywhere because they're not perfect. Now, what your son must realize is the alternative to a new, all right, untried aircraft. It's the sort of aircraft he's been flying so far, the BE-2. You think I should go straight ahead with quality production? The moment you get the initial order. The Flying Corps needs that aeroplane desperately. What about my son? Oh, he's not the only pilot in England. No, but I want him here. Leave that to me. Everything ready? Yes. You don't have to fly, you know. We can't wait until they send someone else. I am a qualified pilot. But you've never flown an aircraft like this one before. No, I haven't. And what Captain Triggers refers to as an average pilot. I'm not going to test her, not the way she'll have to be tested. But I'm going to prove, once and for all, that she's safe to fly. For the average Flying Corps pilot. Who's flying her? Tony Snow. You let him. Yes. Will you take breakfast, sir? Yes, please. Just coffee and toast. Certainly, sir. Hot toaster. Thank you. And coffee. You found your letter, sir? Yes, I did. Thank you. I hope it's good news. Yes, it's from uh, one of the members of my flight, Lieutenant Farmer. I trust they're all well, sir. <laughs> yes, from what I can gather, they're all getting on extremely well without me. Mind you, I expect him to say that. Oh, there is one thing, sir. Yes. Mr. Brotherton. Who is he? The tailor. Uh, Mr. Oh. Brotherton came out of uh, retirement when Mr. Matthews joined the army. Well, what about him? I've arranged for him to call tomorrow afternoon, sir. At five, if that will be convenient. What does Mr. Brotherton want to see me for? To measure you, sir, for your suits. I wish people get into their heads. I won't be here long enough to justify suits. Your father asked me to arrange it, sir. Did he? Yes, sir. Well, since he arranged it, things have changed. The aeroplane I came over here to advise upon will not be built. I'm very sorry to hear that, Yes, sir. and since there's no other reason for my staying here, I'm simply waiting for my telegram. That will be all, Lucas. Thank you very much. Well, this must have been very sudden, sir. Yes, it was. Very sudden. Your father only mentioned it to me half an hour ago. 
I hope you won't mind my saying so, Master Owen, but you do really need some new suit. And you, Lucas, what the hell's going on in this household? Ah, there you are. I'm cooking for you. Another coffee, Lucas, sir. You're out walking the dogs. They need the exercise. So do I. I thought you might have come along as well. What's all this about my having suits? Oh, you can't go and wear a uniform. I am going back to France. Oh, don't worry about that. It's been cancelled. By whom? Hmm? Yeah, I put in a word. You'll need it here. Leave us, please, Lucas. I appreciate being needed, but I'm going back to France. I'm an insult you. You know, and I know, the advantages of staying here. Yes, I know. A lot more comfortable, a lot safer, and a lot more money. Oh, well, that's not the point. Have some tips. Oh, I've already breakfasted, thank you. No, I said I wouldn't insult you. I just happen to think you'll be of more use here. You don't here. understand, do you? you it's really a question of understand. priorities. There's plenty of other people who can serve it's in France. It's also a question of loyalties. There's that too. I have my own flight. I was hoping you might have a little loyalty to me. Look, this letter is from a member of my flight. I don't expect that he will survive the war. In fact, mathematically, he should be dead already. Now, I happen to believe that he has a better chance of survival with me as his flight commander. My loyalties are to him and to the other members under my command. Who were under your command. Will be under my command when I get back. Look, I know how you feel and I respect you for it. But don't think you'll be avoiding your duty by staying here. Oh, On the contrary, you... you'll be doing your men over there a greater service by helping to design the aeroplane oh, they need father, to save their you lives. Yo, what, what, what is I it? can't Excuse get me, sir. Colonel Forbes is here. What the devil is he even? All right, sir, I mean. You didn't think you'd have it easy. I'll make sure you earn your pay. Well, yes. I thought you were back in London. What is it? It's about you. Oh. What about me? You're being posted back to France. When? Immediately. To report to headquarters tomorrow. Thank you. Lucas! It's been arranged. There's nothing I could do. It was the General's personal decision. Sir? Lucas, uh, cancel that appointment with Mr. What? Who's his name? Brotherton, sir. Brotherton the tailor. I won't be needing any suits. Yes, sir. And press my uniform. Would you like some breakfast, Colonel? No, thank you. Well, the iron deck is not as manoeuvrable as everybody thinks, you know. And she doesn't like diving too steeply at all. Yeah, she's tricky. a lot nippier than the BT, though, isn't she? Yes, yes. but don't you see, if we had two machines, say one at 8,000 feet, another at 3,000, we could force her down into a steep Alan, dive. Alan, No talking shop in the mess, that boy, honey. Hey, listen, um... I don't quite know how to put this, really, but, uh... Well, you've quite surprised me. In what? Well, I'll tell you the truth, I did have my doubts. But what? Triggers recommending you for commission. But I think, and I think I speak for everybody. You've taken to your new responsibilities like, um, Dr. Water. Well, thank you, Josh. Yeah. You two are a couple of dark horses, aren't you? What are you on about? Why didn't you tell me about this nurse? Nurse? Yes. Sergeant Mills has just been on to base hospital. Someone there mentioned a nurse who knows you two extremely well. Yes, well, if you'll excuse me. Oh, God, what's that with Farmer? I've put my foot in it, haven't I? I'd say that. Mm. That nurse happens with Norma Collins. Not the one he was mm, going to... The one he's going to marry. What happened? Send me it. Well, I, uh... Messed it up for him, really. What do you mean? When you were over in Blighty as a pilot instructor? Mm. I've just been trying to persuade him to write to her after all this time. I suppose he can't write. Huh? Joke. Oh, very good. Sir! Hello. Good heavens! Oh, welcome oh. back! Hello. Oh, oh we've got to be going to see inside. you again! Yeah, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> what happened, sir? Well, they posted me to England without warning. They posted me back without warning. Uh, Vincent, uh, drink for Captain Triggers. Oh, oh come on, it's it a celebration. Drinks all round. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good luck. What were you doing over there, sir? I was advising on a new aeroplane. A new machine? Yes. Oh, would you yes, like? Sir. Thank you very much. Sir? It's a single-seater fighter, forward-firing synchronised machine gun, half the speed of gunners, a BE-2, twice the rate of climb, turns on a six Oh, <laughs> splendid. Oh, when are we getting her? We're not getting her. Oh, why not? Gentlemen, I've got some trinkets from London. Richard, for you. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Michael? Oh, tennis racket! You? Perfectly splendid. Oh, Charles, to be read. In private, I think. Thank you, sir. Let me have a look at this. Have you shot down the Eindeckers? Uh, well, no. You haven't? No. Who's on the dawn patrol? Arms. Fine, I'll come with you. I'm going to bed now. I'm very tired. Good night. Good night, sir. Good to be back. This is splendid. Splendid. Excuse me, sir. I mean, what, what were you actually doing over there in England, then? As flies to wanton boys are we to the general staff. 
Good night. Good night, sir. Oh, business as usual. I hope he doesn't know the rest of his misquotation. Yes, what it flies to wanton boys are we to the gods. They kill us for their sport. Oh, Alan. Alan. I've got yours. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good night. <laughs>